Imagine a continent no longer bound by fuel stations or power grids, but instead unified by a source of energy, as constant as the sun itself. Envision a future in motion, not just of machines, but of minds, dreams, and nations rising on the wings of innovation. That future took its first breath in Harare, Zimbabwe, where the midday sun beat down on the asphalt, and where something unprecedented quietly prepared to awaken. It wasn't the launch of a rocket, or the unveiling of some multi-million dollar factory. It was something much simpler, and far more profound. A bus. Sleek in design, humming not with the combustion of fuel, but with the quiet resonance of electromagnetic promise. Its silhouette was striking, solar panels gleaming along its roof, sensors embedded seamlessly into its bodywork, and a logo glowing faintly on its side Chikambetso Technologies. The name was becoming a whisper in global tech circles, but in Zimbabwe, it, it was already a roar. Maxwell Chikambetso, the soft-spoken engineer and inventor, stood before the vehicle. Around him the air vibrated with anticipation. This wasn't just a product launch, it was a turning point. Reporters gathered, unsure whether to be skeptical or in awe. Children played nearby, occasionally running up to place their hands on the bus's metallic surface, giggling at the strange idea that a bus could move without ever needing fuel, and Maxwell, looking not at the cameras but at the road ahead north. Toward Cairo seemed to see something no one else yet could. The crowd wasn't just here to see a bus roll forward. They had come to witness possibility being ignited. There were no fuel trucks waiting in the wings, no diesel stations plotted on this map. This was a machine designed to roam freely and tethered, self-sufficient, adaptive. And when the bus doors hissed open with quiet finality, the first passengers stepped aboard not just engineers and documentarians, but believers, dreamers who knew that this moment, however unassuming it seemed, was destined to echo. The vehicle didn't roar to life. It whispered, hum, barely audible over the crowd's cheers, signaled the start of something revolutionary. As it pulled away from the curb, Harari's familiar skyline began to shrink in the rear windows. The journey had begun, not only across geography, but through culture, industry, and imagination. A line had been drawn in the sand from Zimbabwe to Egypt, just in miles, but in mindset. The path northward was intentionally ambitious. Africa's roads are many things, beautiful, chaotic, diverse, and unpredictable. From savannas to cityscapes, winding hills to densely packed villages, the terrain would offer no grace. But the vehicle was ready. With regenerative magnetic motors, self-correcting AI-driven systems, and modular solar arrays, it wasn't just built to survive the journey, it was built to learn from it. At every checkpoint, curious onlookers gathered. By the time the bus had cleared the outskirts of Harare, it had already gone viral. Videos were shared across WhatsApp, Facebook, and TikTok. In one clip, a traffic officer waves it through with a salute, grinning from ear to ear. This one doesn't need petrol, he laughs. It needs belief. Every hour brought more eyes to the road. Children ran alongside it in barefoot glee. Farmers paused in their fields, shading their eyes with calloused hands, to watch the futuristic shape glide silently past. By evening, the bus reached Garu, the team set up a modest camp beside it, while the vehicle quietly topped up its power reserves from the sun setting beyond the plains. Local leaders arrived, greeted Maxwell, and asked to see what made this miracle move. Standing, beside the open control panel, he explained the core technologies in simple language, core tech motors, energy feedback loops, heat management systems that repurposed friction and sun into motion. We don't have to burn the earth to cross it, he said, heads nodded slowly. The realization dawned. This wasn't just for cities. This was for everyone. For the child who walks 10 kilometers to school, for the pregnant mother needing transport to the clinic, for the trader trying to move crops without relying on erratic fuel deliveries. The next morning, footage from Gwe went live. The video reached Nairobi, Lagos, Accra, and beyond. The comment sections exploded. How can I buy one? Will it work in our mountains? Can we get one for our school? Maxwell had started a conversation that was now writing its own chapters. South of Lusaka, Zambia, the real tests began. The roads were rough, scarred with potholes, and battered by years of weather. The heat bore down with dry intensity, and yet, the bus moved like a symphony of stability. The torque distribution adjusted with each terrain shift. The AI scanned and learned from every vibration. Cameras and drones captured it all, broadcasting the bus gliding over land that would have reduced older vehicles to wreckage. In Lusaka itself, banners welcomed them. Students from a technical college boarded, marveling at the control interfaces and touchscreen dashboards. Maxwell showed them everything, saying, this is not magic, this is engineering. Learn it, lead with it. Their eyes lit up. Their notebooks filled for a moment. The bus wasn't a machine, it was a teacher. The journey became more than a road trip, it became a movement. Each village, town, and city became a data point, not just for energy use or battery health, but for excitement, belief, and imagination. In Tanzania, the mountain roads became steeper. But even there, the bus adapted. Regenerative braking turned descents into fuel. It was learning in real-time terrain response, growing smarter, efficiency rising dot by now. 
Global News had taken notice BBC Africa ran segments. Al Jazeera profiled the trip, a German tech journal called it Africa's Tesla moment. Skeptics emerged, asking tough questions about durability, production scale, and cost. Maxwell welcomed the critique. Let them test it, he said. Let them ride. Let them try to break it. So far none had succeeded. In Arusha, Tanzanian, students proposed local spin-offs delivery vehicles, mobile clinics, solar ambulances. One teenage girl asked, can it carry water from Faroff Wells to our village? Maxwell smiled. It can carry more than water, he said. It can carry your future. By the time the bus reached Nairobi, the arrival felt like a festival. Crowds danced in the streets. Billboards read, the future just arrived. At a local tech incubator, Maxwell gave a TED-style talk streamed across the continent. Don't wait for Silicon Valley, he urged. Africa already has answers. The applause rolled like thunder, and still the bus rolled on dot through Ethiopia's dramatic highlands and cool altitudes. The machine proved its mettle. Temperatures fluctuated. Roads vanished into switchbacks, but the systems never faltered. Maxwell noted how gravity itself recharged the vehicle during long descents. The very land was becoming an energy source. In Odis Ababa, the African Union arranged interviews. What had started as a daring experiment was now a political statement, an economic possibility, and a symbol of Pan-African ingenuity. We deserve systems that understand us, Maxwell said to ministers and scientists, and that starts with technology designed by us. The deserts of Sudan offered the harshest trial, no shade, no roads, just scorching heat and fine sand. Traditional buses would buckle here, but this one adapted. It entered high-temperature mode, activating internal cooling reserves and shifting power where needed. It didn't just survive, it thrived. In Darfur, it stopped at a school rebuilt after conflict. The children swarmed the bus with laughter and awe. Inside, it became a pop-up classroom, solar power workshops, lessons on magnetism. One girl, no older than 10, said, I want to build my own. In that moment, the bus became more than a vehicle. It became a vision. Finally, the road led northward, through Egypt along the Nile, past relics of empires and echoes of time. In Aswan, border guards waved it through like a dignitary. In Luxor, university students boarded and debated its algorithms. Cairo loomed ahead, and with it, a symbolic finish. But in truth, the journey had already succeeded by the time they reached the capital. Fireworks lit the sky. Crowds swarmed the streets. The Ministry of Transportation pledged pilot projects. Offers flowed. Partnerships were proposed. But Maxwell didn't see the finish line. He saw a beginning. He laid out a plan for 50 more buses, built locally, deployed widely each one training technicians, each one a seed of a new future. This is no longer just my dream, he said. It belongs to everyone. And so, the bus that started in Harare became not just a marvel of engineering, but a symbol of what Africa can do when belief meets boldness. No longer dependent, no longer waiting. From village roads to bustling capitals, it rolled forward. On sunlight and grit, not just crossing a continent, but connecting at one whispering wheel at a time.